Hi everyone, my name is Oliver, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. On August 16, 2016, Pamela Hope placed a distressed call to 911 reporting a burglary in process. Pam Hop had been a normal, scared older woman who had barely brushed past a cold-blooded death until the investigation surrounding Louis Gumpenberger's death started. Pam Hop was born on October 20, 1958, in Delwood, Missouri. She was the second child of the Newman family. Pam married Mark Hop, and their union was blessed with two children. In 2001, they started living in Fallen, Missouri. Pam tried out a lot of jobs. Pam Hop worked as a life administrator for State Farm until 2010 when she stopped working. She began to lay disability claims for leg and back pains. Pam had not exactly been a model citizen, as she had been accused of forging signatures on insurance documents twice. But one thing anyone who met Pam would never imagine she was capable of was cold-blooded murder. At around noon on August 16, 2016, Louis Gumpenberger died after he was shot five times by Pam Hop in her apartment. Louis was a mentally challenged man. He had started battling with mental and physical disabilities after he suffered a car crash in 2005. That day, Pam had called 911 to complain of a robbery. She claimed that Lewis had jumped out of a vehicle that was being driven by another driver and attacked her with a knife while she was inside her SUV. Pam, while giving her statement, claimed that she had slapped the knife away from his hand with a karate chop and ran straight into her house to get the Ruger LCR she had kept on her nightstand and shot him five times. Pam accused Lewis of ordering her to drive him to the bank to withdraw Russ's money. Hop claimed Louis Gumpenberger attacked her in her driveway. He goes, she goes, we're going to the bank, we're getting Russ's money, and he starts getting all agitated and excited. They soon learned Russ was Russ Feria, a man wrongfully convicted for his wife Betsy's 2011 murder. At the crime scene, nine notes of $100 bills were found on the deceased's body. A handwritten note addressed to the deceased was also found. In the note was an instruction on the thing he needed to do at Pam's apartment. First, he had to make sure he got Russ's money, then he would take Pam into the house, kill her, and make it look like Russ's wife did it. Whoever wanted Pam dead had wanted her life to end in a specific style. Make sure knife is sticking out of neck was his instruction to Gumpenberger, and he was willing to reward Gumpenberger handsomely for his service. He had promised the deceased a whooping sum of Tyler Tentesend. They arrested Pam Hop for murder. We had the arrest exclusively on Fox 2, it's video you will never see anywhere else. But had Gumpenberger really been a hired assassin or Pam had only taken advantage of a mentally disabled and set him up with a note she had written herself? The truth behind Gumpenberger's death started coming to the limelight when Pam voluntarily went to the O'Fallon Police Department. Her first question as soon as her interview started would later form the basis for the arrest. Pam had asked the officer if the interrogation would be recorded because she usually appeared with Chris Hayes, a KTVI news reporter. She even went as far as blaming Hayes for attracting criminals with his reporting. I blame Chris Hayes. Why does that matter? Well, it's hard to get into that. I think the idea that we're trying to convey, and we hope to convey a trial. Pam Hop loved acting as Kathy, a producer of a television show, Dying NBC. This was, in fact, how she managed to brutally end Lou Gumpenberger's life, according to the fallen chief of police and the prosecuting attorney of St. Charles County. Pam had lured Gumpenberger into her home by posing as Kathy. She tricked him into recreating a 911 call, a perfect cover for the heinous crime she was about to perpetrate. After murdering Gumpenberger, she wrote the note that was found on him. What's the address you're at? No. What me, you, your wife? No, I'm not getting in the car with you. No, get away. Get out, get out, get out. The police firmly believed that Kathy was a cold-blooded murderer because of the bulk load of evidence they discovered. First, the dollar nine bills found on Gumpenberger's body were planted on him by Pam. The tenth note had been found in her dresser, and it shared a sequential serial number with three out of the nine dollar one hundred bills. Then, the same. Charles County Police reopened a complaint lodged on August 10, 2016, by Carol Alford about a woman who matched Pam's description. The woman had approached Alford to mimic a 911 call for $1,000. The said woman had been driving a car that matched Pam's SUV. Carol Alford wasn't the only one with that kind of complaint. 
Brent Harlton admitted to the police that Pam had approached him with the same offer less than an hour before Pam shot Gumpenberger. She was in his neighborhood. In her interview, she claimed that she had never met Gumpenberger before, but her call record showed that she had been right in front of his door. Further investigations showed that Pam owned the knife she claimed Gumpenberger attacked her with. She had bought the knife alongside other items at a store in Fallen. Even the note she had planted on him, Pam had a habit of keeping her knife wedged in between her kitchen counter and stove. Similarly, the knife found in her car was lodged in between the passenger seat and the central console. While combing her home, the police found a carpet swatch placed to protect her rug from Gumpenberger's blood. Moreover, the police department did not believe that Louis Gumpenberger could commit the crime Pam accused him of, considering his mental state. Pam's guilt. She shot Gumpenberger as if to protect the rug underneath from blood. On August 23, 2016, Pam Hopp was arrested and charged with first-degree murder and armed criminal action. On the day of her arrest, she asked for permission to use the restroom. Pam stabbed her wrist and neck with a ballpoint in an attempt to take her own life. Thankfully, she did not succeed. She appeared in court for the first time on January 30, 2017. Phil Grindway, St. Charles County Assistant Prosecutor, described Pam's action as a consciousness of guilt. Pam faced a grand jury that convicted her of every charge. In December 2016, Pam's bail was set to $2 million. Pam's trial started in 2017. She pleaded not guilty, which made the prosecutor gun for the death penalty. Their reason was Pam's arbitrary choice of Gump. In Berger, a vulnerable adult, to carry out her criminal fantasy. The case turned out to be a classic example of no-body murder, a murder trial in which the victim's body has never been found. According to defense attorney Travis Noble, a first-degree murder conviction without a body is very rare. In such cases, the prosecution's case is dependent on whether or not the jury believes the defendant is dead. He insisted that the prosecution had a weak case because it lacked motive. In her defense, Pam's attorney, Travis Noble, presented his case by casting doubt on the evidence presented by the prosecution. Noble used the argument that the evidence presented by the prosecution was circumstantial. I'm saying, where is the evidence that shows Pam's guilt? Noble argued. The judge, John Cunningham, ruled in favor of the prosecution. He sentenced Pam to life in prison without the possibility of parole for first-degree murder and armed criminal action. On February 15, 2019, Judge John Cunningham sentenced Pam Hop to life in prison without parole for her role in Gumpenberger's murder. Judge Cunningham also imposed a 30-year sentence for the armed criminal action charge. Mark Hop, Pam's husband, was also sentenced to a prison term. He was found guilty of domestic assault against his wife and was sentenced to five years in prison.